Burlesque by Kamari 333 Chapter 28 First Step Dance stared at red and lust, eye light slightly hazed, focused on the middle distance, brow furrowed in concentration. Red held still, unsure what that expression meant. Red wasn't certain he liked being looked at like that, looked through like that. It wasn't like being checked, but it was certainly close enough for discomfort. He made sure to hold perfectly still, since he'd fucked up enough already today, tightening his grip on Lust's collar. His other hand found itself into his pocket, clutching at the velvet box there, the box he was sure he would never have caused to open. We need to talk. Dance started, and oh fuck, oh fuck, he was gonna say it. He was gonna fucking say it. Say that Red was a goddamn fuck up and he needed to leave. Needed to leave and stay the fuck away from Lust. And he'd be right this time. Red was dangerous. A dangerous fucking moron who couldn't even keep his own pet safe. Dance held up his hands in a placating gesture, eyelights going small as they focused on Red's face. Hey, whoa, chill. No need to get so rattled. You're not in trouble or anything. I ain't rattled, Red muttered, avoiding eye contact. Look, if you want me gone, just say so. I get it. You gone is the last thing I want, you bonehead. Dance grumbled right back, taking a deep breath. Okay, wow, this is hard. Would it be easier if I gave you two some alone time? Lust asked, and Red tightened his grip even more on reflex. No. Please, you are very much needed here right now. Dance practically whined, taking another deep breath, his eyelights unfocusing again for a moment. You're acting weird tonight. Red wanted to ask if Dance was alright. He was acting strange all of a sudden. His eyelights kept jittering weirdly. Was he having vision problems? Was he sick? Oh fuck, did Red give him food poisoning? It took all of Red's threadbare self-control not to run a check on him to make sure his HP was still high. I'm fine, Dance muttered as if he could read Red's mind. This is just hard. What's hard, baby? Lust asked the question Red was too afraid to voice. I'll explain later. Not gonna let anything derail this. Dance pulled out his phone, reaching into the dimension box to pull out a mustard bottle? No, it was a plush toy shaped like a cartoonish mustard bottle, comically oversized to be big enough to use as a pillow substitute. Dance held it out. Here. Red wasn't entirely certain what this was supposed to mean. He pulled his hand from his pocket, taking hold of the plushie, careful not to let his claws puncture the soft material. Uh, (laughs) I mean, it's nice, but uh, what's it for? Dance put his hands in his hoodie pouch. It's a gift, you know, because I like you. Red clicked his teeth, finally pulling his arm off of Lust and stepping away from him. No, you don't. He turned to Lust, fighting down the awful ache in his chest, the burn in his sockets. You put the grease monkey up to this? I... Red put up his hand, a gesture for silence. Nah, don't think I want to know, sweetheart. I get you want us to get along, but you can't force it. Dance just ain't never gonna like me, and I'd rather us be honest about that than... Then kid himself about his chances, then pretend nothing was wrong, then indulge in even one moment of pretending that Dance would ever see or think of him as anything but what he was, a useless, violent dumbass who could barely keep himself alive, never mind a pet, never mind two. He could handle Dance not liking him, He could handle the ridicule and disdain and fear, but please, please, for fuck's sake, don't fake. Something hit Red in the side of the head. His senses went on alert, panic setting in because, oh fuck, he'd been hit, he's gonna die. Where had that attack even come from? He hadn't felt any violent intent anywhere. Red did a quick check on himself, only to find his HP was still completely intact, not a scratch on him. He looked down, where he was sure the projectile had fallen, to see a plush toy shaped like an apple, a little too red, with a little stubby stem, complete with a cartoonish leaf. You don't get to tell me how I feel, Dance said low. 
I said I like you and I mean it. It has nothing to do with lust. Did you just throw an apple toy at me? Dance came closer. Red went as still as possible. He could feel sweat slick down his spine, the tension mounting as Dance advanced. I'm trying to tell you that I mean it, you dumbass. Dance growled. I'm sick and tired of dancing around the issue. Oh, for the love of God, no fucking puns. And now I finally have a good rhythm down. Dance continued, glaring up at Red defiantly. I'm going to take whatever steps necessary to get through to you. Lust snickered, picking up the apple plushie and bumping it lightly against Red's shoulder. He means it, sweetheart. How the fuck am I supposed to take him seriously when he's spouting off fucking shitty ass puns? Red complained, but he didn't move. He was too afraid to move. This had to be a dream. Suave must have knocked him out or dusted him while he was making dinner and this was all just a bad dream. Only this part was almost okay. Except the puns. The puns were awful. If you want to shut me up, just give me an honest answer, bonehead. The fuck you want from me? Red snapped. You want to hear I want you as my pet? That I've wanted you as my pet since the damn drinking game? You happy now, you fucking ass? Dance reached up his hand moving faster than Red would have given him credit for, curled and opened to latch onto his goal. He nearly made contact with Red's collar, but the magic within it sparked angrily at just the intent in Dance's hand as it approached. Dance's eyelights dilated harshly as he yanked his hand back, clenching his fist before stuffing it into his hoodie pouch. Red put his own hand over his collar, trying to use his own intent to mute that of his brother's, to calm it. To make it shut the fuck up, you're scaring Dance, you overgrown toothpick. Shut up, shut up, God damn it! Red was such a fuck up. He shouldn't have let Dance get that close. Should have known better. Should have... Red? Dance's voice was both loud and soft all at once. Kneel down. What? Kneel down for me so I can put my money where my mouth is. Red felt every porous surface in his face burn with excess magic. He ain't fucking serious. He couldn't be. Dance was terrified of him. I am completely serious. I'm not standing on my tiptoes to get to you. You come down to me. You mean it? Red felt his soul flutter nervously. This couldn't be happening. Really gonna be my pet? Let me take care of you? How many different ways do I gotta say it, Bonehead? Dance asked, exasperated, and almost affectionate. He almost sounded affectionate. Oh shit, this was happening. This was really happening. Just... Red reached out. Tentative, careful, careful. He had to be fucking careful, no sudden moves. Until he had his hand around Dance's throat, scratching lightly at his jaw. Be real with me. Gonna be mine? Wear my collar, let me tend to ya, and fuss and shit. Dance sighed, gripping Red's wrist with one hand, not pulling it away, just holding it there. Yes, already, jeez. His face was dusted faintly in a pale blue, shimmering as he averted his gaze. Red stared at him. He couldn't find it. He couldn't find a single tell that the offer was anything but honest. Dance had given him food albeit food-shaped plush toys, which were oddly endearing. He kind of loved them. Dance agreed to be his pet. Dance agreed to be his pet. Holy shit. Red bent down, pressing his frontal bone to Dance's, paying close attention to his response, waiting for even the slightest hint that he wasn't comfortable. It never came. Dance just stood there, breathing slow and easy, his face glowing a bit brighter. Red hadn't felt this kind of relief, this kind of happiness, since Lust put on his collar. Speaking of which, Red reached out with his free hand, pulling Lust against him. I, it's been a real long fucking day. Don't know about the two of you, but I'm ready to crash. Bed now. Dance deadpanned, gesturing vaguely in the direction of the bedroom. All three of us? Lust asked, the sheer level of hope in his voice almost heartbreaking. Yes. Dance decided, which Red was more than fine with. Careful to still move slow and easy, no use poking the bear. 
Red pulled his head away from Dance and wrapped his arm around both of his pets. Both. Holy shit. Both. Did he die and go to a better place because holy shit, this had to be a dream. A dumb dream. Or a cruel joke. He should be so much more skeptical. Where were the fucking cameras? Who was pranking him? He guided them to the bedroom and flopped on Lust's mattress, letting his sockets drift shut after setting the oversized mustard bottle by the pillows against the headboard. He'd probably wake up in the morning and find this was all some drunken hallucination. He only just remembered to fish the box from his pocket and tuck both it and his cell phone on the shelf above the bed before settling back down again. What's that? Lust asked, snuggling into Red's side, already changed into more comfortable sleeping clothes. Red looked up just in time to see Dance duck into the bathroom, a wad of clothes in his arms. Nothing, Red huffed. Just a project. What kind of project? Maybe not a pointless one after all. Lust hummed. Alright, I get it. It's a secret. Red chuckled, turning his head to watch the bathroom door, his frayed nerves singing nervously from knowing he had another pet and not knowing for certain where he was or how he was doing or if he needed help. Stop it, shut up, don't be creepy, that will only push him away. After a little while, Dance came back in, dressed in a baggy t-shirt and trunks. He dumped the wad of fabric that was his regular clothes and climbed into bed, motions hesitant and uncertain. Lust rolled away from Red, padding the space he made between them. Dance slid himself into place, throwing his arms around Lust and pressing into Red's side with his back. Red rolled onto his side, throwing his arm over both of them. He didn't know how long he lay there, just listening to their breathing, exhausted emotionally and physically, but unwilling to really sleep for fear of waking up and this moment disappearing. He only knew for certain that his last thoughts were how comforting it was to know they were both right there. The next morning, Dance woke up feeling warm and safe. Lust was a small furnace, cuddled in his arms, pressed up close in his favorite cuddle position, his face nuzzled into Dance's shoulder. That by itself was usually more than enough to have Dance feeling warm and content, but this morning... There was a completely different presence at his back. Red's larger frame, drenched in sweat and glistening with it in the dim light, was half draped over Dance from behind, his arm a protective weight on Dance's side, caging him in between Red and Lust. Dance sighed with relief. He'd actually done it. Last night had been a completely different kind of difficult. Separating his emotions from Red's and Lust was a task requiring far too much focus than he ever expected it to. Their wavelengths were so close together it was unreal. Dance wondered if it would be easier to just ride them out than expel them altogether. And Red had been so full of fear and confusion, so full of hurt and anger, it was no wonder Dance had always been on a hair trigger around him. The way that had all crumbled to nothing and left Red filled with profound joy after he'd finally gotten through to him was both humbling and an incredible ego boost. The intimate knowledge of just how highly Red valued him, as highly as Red valued lust, as highly as Dance valued lust, made his traitorous soul quake and flutter. A loud musical beeping noise broke through the relaxing silence. Behind him, Red growled, the noise quivering deep in his ribcage, making his chest vibrate against Dance's back. Red shifted, pulling Dance and Lust closer, cuddling them to his chest. Fuck off. He snarled viciously, right before burying his face in Dance's shoulder, his jaw slightly open, just enough for Red's teeth to graze lightly over Dance's bones. The sensation supercharged Dance's marrow with electricity, setting every particle of dust in his body alight. Dance didn't dare move, but this was suddenly very delicate territory and he had no idea what the hell to do. In front of him, Lust had squirmed out of both Red's and Dance's arms and found the source of the noise. Lust's cell phone. He turned off the alarm, a soft whine escaping an external sign that did nothing to convey the annoyance, want, resolve, excitement, and contentment he was feeling. As he sat up, pulling away and off the bed, 
Red growled again, the noise heralding grumpiness and worry and a kind of neediness that was objectively adorable. And who would have thought that that would be a word Dance would use to describe Red, as he groped sleepily, blindly for Lust. Lust stood just out of reach, watching with a soft, fond grin on his face. I'm going to see my bro, sweetheart. Lust mumbled, reaching down to catch hold of Red's hand, halting his search. Lust thumbed at Red's metacarpals, and Dance could feel Red shiver against him, soothed by the contact. It's okay. Go back to sleep. Red mumbled something that might have been, Okay, be safe. His body relaxing again with relief, his breathing slowing. When Lust let go of his hand, Red brought his arm in and curled it tight around Dance, hugging and cuddling him closer, still with protectiveness and a visceral joy, leaving Dance thoroughly trapped. Lust smiled far too victoriously, radiating amusement and pride. Dance tried wiggling to see if he could slip out of Red's arms. Red only tightened his grip, shifting it so the arm Dance had been laying on could curl up and around him also, cuddling Dance like a stuffed animal. Lust circled the bed, stripping as he walked, heading for the bathroom. Dance got the feeling this was a normal thing, and that he had been used as a sacrifice to Red's morning clinginess. The only thing keeping him from giving Lust a piece of his mind about it, and Red, was the fact that he could feel Red was a step away from falling apart, and that Dance honestly didn't mind the attention. It felt... It made him feel safe and steady, and there was so much trust and love in the air it was making him lightheaded and a little nauseous. Dance groaned softly, curling up tighter to try and hide from the light and the sound that were just plain irritating when he was being choked by all these sappy feelings. Could skeletons suffocate on feelings? If they could, it was a pretty okay way to die. No, but seriously, could monsters die from feelings? Because there was a lot going on right now. Was this a legitimate concern? Was his shitty little soul even built to handle this? Dance started to panic, really panic, clinging to the nearest thing to try and ground himself, which happened to be Red's arms around him. Red tightened his grip, one hand coming up to curl around Dance's neck and scratch and... Oh, okay. That was nice. This was nice. He was fine. No need to panic. He was safe. He would keep him safe. Dance stiffened, sockets shooting open wide. That wasn't him. That was Red. That wasn't him being all calm about the fact he was drowning in emotions. That was Red feeling zen because Dance was in his arms, letting himself be cuddled and protected and... And Red wanted to protect him. Shit, oh shit, calm down. This is too much, too much, too much. At least Dance knew why he sometimes got so overloaded now. Even before he knew what it was, the issue had been too much, and Dance hadn't known what he was having too much of. Now he knew. Too many feelings all at once. Too many. Him and Red and Lust and it was too much he couldn't take it. Panic flipped through the air and Dance did not have the acidity to tell who it was coming from. Suddenly he was spun around and pulled tight into Red's chest, one hand pressed into his back while the other made little scratching motions on his skull. Then, moments later, it was suddenly so much quieter in the room. It was like someone had been playing heavy metal music on full blast, and then someone yanked the plug for the speaker system out of the wall. Dance could still feel the background noise that was lost in the other room, and Red's collar, and his own internally generated concern. But Red was suddenly... absent. No, not absent. Muted. Like wind blowing outside the walls of your bedroom window during a storm. Red was still panicking. He was worried and terrified, and at least somewhat awake by this point. But Dance could barely hear it. Shh, this is a bad dream, is I... Red rumbled softly. Holy shit, he thought Dance was having a nightmare, didn't he? Dance did not have the emotional bandwidth to be overwhelmed by an irrational fear. And yes, he knew it was an irrational fear. If that was actually a thing, he'd probably be dead by now. He's been like this for four years and just hadn't diagnosed himself right. 
of self-destructing from overloading on feelings and also be overwhelmed by how stupid fucking cute it was that Red, big dumb but also not dumb Red, who was grisly and prickly and angry and terrifying, was trying to comfort someone having a bad dream. Something had to give. Dance decided the fear could be what gave in today. He made himself relax, focused on the feeling of a comforting hand on his back, on how warm and safe he was, on how he finally had everything he wanted. Slowly, as Dance found himself calming down, he felt his sense for Red's state trickle in more fully. The muted sensation faded, and Red's emotions came back in their entirety. As they did, Red's feelings shifted from alarm to relief, that pervasive affection filling Dance to the brim along with contentment. Dance could definitely get used to this. Now all he needed was lust to come back and it would be perfect. Dance huffed, shifting a little more as he got more comfortable. The steady scratching at his skull had slowed, but had not quite stopped altogether. Affection and contentment and a general fondness settled over Dance like a mantle, along with the faint scent of watermelon and sweat. He didn't fight the pleasant static that filled his skull, letting him drift back to sleep. Lust came out of the shower, patting himself dry as he looked over his date mates. Red had curled protectively over Dance, and Dance had spun around to bury his face in Red's shirt. Lust couldn't help himself, pausing his morning routine to slip up behind Red, kissing at his skull and shoulder as he reached in to wipe a bit of drool from Dance's jaw. He still couldn't get over how goddamn lucky he was to have not just one or the other, but to have both. Both of these wonderful boys were his, and one of them had even said he loved him. On top of which, they were both so unbelievably adorable in the mornings, like kittens snuggling together for warmth and comfort. Lust couldn't help the purr that stirred in his ribcage, couldn't help darting to the other side of the bed and pressing a few well-deserved kisses to Dance's skull as well. He wanted to snuggle in between them and bask in that pleasant warmth that had nothing to do with his affliction, that thing that Dance finally made it okay to name, that undeniable love. But his boys had only just started reaching out for each other, and like hell he was letting anything get in between them, himself included. For now, he was going to take a few pictures, get dressed, and then gush to his brother about the newest addition to his slowly growing list of blessings. Hey guys, Mel here. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed it, please like this video, and if you want to see more, consider subscribing. I look forward to bringing you the next chapter. Bye!